insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 142, Racism, Slaps, and Weird Star Wars. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my creative and inspiring co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, dear? Not too bad. And you? Doing all right. We're a little late this week doing this. We yeah. uh, had some weather events happen on Thursday that kind of pushed the show. Mm-hmm. So how was your week? Uh, that good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Not enough said there, I think. Yeah, and you know, we have a, a new house guest uh, staying with us a little bit more uh, full-time right. than before, and we had a, a little bit of some incidents last night with said guest and the other residents uh, that, that reside here. Cat fight. <laughs> Literally, a cat <laughs> fight. So, yes, so we are now up to four kitties under easy cat lady yes yeah. yes we are the cats now outnumber us nice that's that's <laughs> never good <laughs> never good well we got a uh, got a busy show today so let's jump right into it mm-hmm. so this week we are going to be talking about uh how disney manages to do it wrong yet again then we'll take a look at how star wars almost got very weird on us And finally, we'll talk about the unavoidable news from this past weekend's Academy Awards. So, and that's a developing story that's been updated probably four times since I wrote this script. Yeah, yeah. Like every day there's something new that that pops up. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. We just updated it again five minutes before the show started. Mm -hmm. So before we do that, though, I do want to uh, invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. Video and audio versions can also be found listed on their Insights into Things. And we can be found anywhere you can find a podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, and so forth. Uh, We would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us your shows, your, your conventions to plug. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can get links to all those and much more on our official website at insights into things.com. Here we go. Go. So Disney just can't seem to get it right. What's that old saying about lightning never strikes twice? Well, it has, at least in the form of bad press. And Disney is once again the lightning rod atta- uh, attracting it. After just coming off the heels of the insensitive handling of the Don't Say Gay bill, Disney is now courting racist performance performances in their parks. The Port Neches Grove High School drill team shocked attendees at Walt Disney World on March 15th with their racist performance. Marching in their purple fringe dresses, the drill team chanted questionable slogans like, Scalp 'em Indians, Scalp 'em, among other things. An attorney for the uh, Objiwa tribe shared a portion of this video performance on Twitter with their astonishing, astonished reaction to such blatant racist remarks. Tara Hauska writes, because a bunch of kids in fringe chanting, scalp em, Indian, scalp em, is honor, right? Shame on Disney Parks hosting this. Nostalgic racism is racism. 
So how many red flags does it take to clue in a mega media giant into a problem? Disney missed numerous red flags, any one of which could have clued you in to a potential problem so you could have prevented it. The Texas-based high school's nickname were the Indianettes. You'd think that would have been a first sign of a possible problem, but apparently Disney missed that clue. The fringed costumes the team wore were a clear case of cultural appropriation of traditional indigenous people's dress, another clue Disney either missed or simply ignored. And finally, the school's official fight song is titled Cherokee. Okay, so I could see how you might confuse this as perhaps a homage to that particular Native American tribe. But a few seconds of Googling would net you a video of the song along with its racist lyrics. Instead, Disney allowed them to perform at their parks, either oblivious to the issue because they neglected to do their due diligence, or simply ignoring the warning signs. Despite the damage done, Disney was quick to distance themselves from the performance or their responsibility for screening those performing in their parks, as if they had no foreknowledge of what it contained. Disney spokesman Jackie Waller said in the statement, quote, The live performance in our park did not reflect our core values and we regret it took place. It was not consistent with the audition tape the school provided and we have immediately put measures in place so this is not repeated. So criticism has been lodged at Disney for their lame attempt to distance and dismiss the racist performance. At no time has Disney condemned the performance, nor have they acknowledged their own mistake in hosting this group. And there has been no statement of support for indigenous peoples or even an apology that it happened. In recent years, the company has started putting disclaimers on its more dated works in an attempt to acknowledge insensitive material. Movies like 1953's Peter Pan now have warnings to viewers about stereotypical portrayals of indigenous people. Disney is also in the process of retheming aspects of the park that court more sensitive materials such as the Song of the South themed Splash Mountain to make it more universally acceptable. The entertainment giant has initiated steps in it takes for new material to avoid these types of issues. A diversity and inclusion initiative reviews and filters new material from for uh, from the company. Their aim is to amplify underrepresented voices. An attempt is being made to champion the importance of accurate representation in media and entertainment. So is this all just buzzword bingo here? Disney seems very adept at saying the right things about these issues. Of course, they usually say those things after they're called on the carpet for them. Which leaves the casual observer and the offended party scratching their heads as to how out of touch Disney really is. It's clear Disney's prime objective is to protect their image and preserve their bottom line. They don't seem to be inclined to acknowledge shortcomings in the organization until a spotlight has been shown on them. Disney needs to be more proactive at acknowledging the hurtful things they as a company are consistently responsible for and need to take the initiative to correct these issues instead of waiting for someone else to point them out. Now, while we can't blame this one on Bob Chappick directly, the fact of the matter is the buck stops with him, and this happened on his watch. So, like I always say, blame it on Bob. So, what, what do you think? I mean, the fact that they haven't even condemn the performance at this point they basically just said oh that's not our problem and they, they're just distancing themselves like that's that's like the height of irresponsibility i think well i think there was something that came out basically saying they were never going to be allowed to perform again but right. that was really it right like they didn't it was almost like the performance was the problem it wasn't the message for right. the performance like right they 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 fail to seem they seem to they're failing to acknowledge that the content was bad. It was almost like they were like, oh well, it just wasn't a bad act, and we're not going to have them back again. Right, right. And granted, I'm sure they get thousands upon thousands of you know audition tapes. 
from schools all over sure, the country, yeah. probably all, you know, even the world at this point. So, okay. So do you have time to, all right, you know, oh, you would think if they pick a school that looks good in their their audition tape, well, let me just Google them to see. At a minimum. If anything. I mean, literally, it took two minutes Right. To look this school up and f- and see how offensive their performance Right. Was. And the other thing, too, was for the performance in the parade, they didn't, they weren't in full uniform because their full uniform actually for the Indianettes, they actually do have a headdress as well from what but I what had read, But what they did too. wear was clearly cultural appropriation. Oh, absolutely. And, their and whole offensive. uniform itself was yeah. was that. So, and that's the thing is you have all of these high schools that still have their old names that, you know, at least you're starting to see the major league teams, you know, the, the NFL teams and the baseball teams starting to change their names or changing their logos to not be. See, but as a policy, if you're going to have a a school come in that has an offensive name to it like that, don't use the mascot name or, or, or their theme name. Right. The school name is perfectly fine. Right. And they can't wear the offensive uniforms and they can't perform offensive material. You can still allow the kids to come out and do right. a performance just within certain parameters that are not offensive. And How that's, difficult is that? Right. But that's the whole thing. Like thinking about our daughter's, you know, marching band. They have, you know, their uniform. If they were to get picked to perform but yet had some sort of you know inappropriate outfit well and our school probably, probably elements of the outfit too well and that's the whole thing is i'm sure well i'm sure i'm guessing i, I didn't see what the rest of the marching band because it was just their majorettes i guess that right. were in the the outfit so i didn't see what the rest of their marching band was wearing so they might have had a different outfit, but I'm guessing that's a uniform that they use all the time. Whereas, like with okay. our school, I'm just saying because, like our school, then you need to get a different uniform if you want to perform here. Well, and that's the whole thing. If, depending if on your uniform had a big middle finger on the back of it, Disney's not going to let you perform, are they? Right, probably not. But I'm saying, looking at their uniform, that's probably a uniform that is worn. Every year by them, just like for the marching band, the marching band has the same uniform every year, but the our color guard, their outfit changes based and off I'm, of and the, the theme of the show. The point there. So my whole thing is if Disney said, OK, you can come, but you need to change your outfit. I'm guessing they probably wouldn't have gone because they would have had all of those problems solved. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, and you don't that's come. what we're looking for. Well, is a and that's and that's the thing is now Disney maybe has to. If Disney said, "Well, you can't come and wear a uniform like that because it's offensive," maybe it would have taken a school director, the band director, a second to think. Wow, if the if the uniform's offensive, maybe what we're going to perform is offensive too. Yeah. Maybe the name that we chose is a. Maybe it actually starts people thinking, "Hey, this is kind of insensitive, and we shouldn't do this." Maybe Disney should be leading the pack on yeah, this instead well... of. Again, trailing behind and trying to play catch up and, you know, fix the problems they've created. Maybe that's the way they should be going. Mm. As the corporation that they are, they should be leading. They shouldn't be following. I agree. I agree. So, anyway, Disney doing it wrong again, and it's Bob's fault. Um, (laughs) You just enjoy that way too much. (laughs) He's such an easy target. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be right back with uh, some Star Wars news. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, 
Star Wars trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So Weird Al Yankovic almost officially made it into the Star Wars universe. It's hard to listen to the Don McLean classic American Pie and not confuse those immortal lyrics with the Saga Begin lyrics of the Weird Al spoof, especially when every time the song comes on, our daughter sings the Weird Al Well, I was going to say, with with our daughter, yeah. Yeah, that's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, It's hard to hear the Kinks classic Lola and not think of Weird Al's Yoda parody. These have become iconic contributions to the notoriously non-canon world of Star Wars thanks to that zany musician with a talent for parody we all love. But they were all separate and independent from the Star Wars universe. Well, it turns out, Weird Al Yankovic actually had a golden opportunity to be official part of the Star Wars lexicon. Star Wars Detours, an animated series developed by robot chicken creators Seth Green and Matthew Seinrich, featured an episode that included music composed by Weird Al himself. Sadly, the series was shelved and never saw the light of day, so we all missed out on more of his creative genius. So was there really going to be a Star Wars The Musical? Yankovic had actually confirmed on an appearance on the George Lucas talk show. He said, We were working on a Star Wars musical. That was a third season show. We were writing songs and all of a sudden it was just like, this is not going to happen. Yankovic was tight-lipped about details of the music, but did confirm there are at least a half a dozen or more songs that would have been part of the episode along with various characters. He noted that they actually recorded the characters singing their songs about a week before they found out that the project had been canceled. Weird Al, trying to recall details of the project, did indicate the songs were all original and not parodies of existing contemporary material. Detours was developed under the original owner of Lucasfilm prior to the company's sale, George Lucas. It was a comedic series that was over 40 episodes, uh, which had been created for it. Debuting with a sizzle reel back at Star Wars Celebration 2012, uh, it showed great promise. Both Green and Seinreich worked closely with George Lucas to develop the series, which Seth Green later wound up kind of attributing to like hit the best experience of his career. Mm. You know, in an interview. Oh, I'm the sure. Time he got yeah. To spend with Lucas. Uh, when Disney took over the company months later, they shelved a number of new projects in the works. Detours being one of those casualties. Apparently, Disney was concerned that newcomers' first experience to the series not be a satirical one. So he's more than just a music guy. Weird Al also voiced the character of 4LOM on the series, a robotic bounty hunter who made its debut in The Empire Strikes Back. Yankovic wasn't able to recall the complete roster of singers, uh, though he said it's it really was a long time, uh, a long while ago. I'm not sure that I was actually even in that particular episode, so probably not, he said regarding whether he sang for the episode. I think probably most of the principal actors in the series were involved. Lucasfilms, under Disney, has given no hints about a possible revival of the comedic series, but fans continue to hope that they one day will see the finished project. Now, it's funny because there was a whole bunch of projects that Disney had canceled when they took over, Mm -hmm. this being one of them. But this was like 90% of the way Right, they had 40 episodes already done. They had over three seasons ready to go with this. Yeah, like how do you not... Yeah, and especially now that you have Disney Plus, right. you have an opportunity to to well, put it out there. And the funny thing is, this was a satirical animated version of mm-hmm. Star Wars. Well, Star Trek came out with their own right, version their of that, version. their Lower Deck series, mm-hmm. and that's been received extremely well. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of speculation that, given how successful that's been for the Star Trek franchise. It might be worthwhile to go back and revisit these and and make them, you know, non-canon still. Right, right. But you've got this entire work of media. Right. And they've been pulling all kinds of crazy stuff 
back onto Disney Plus well, because they have it. And the other thing, too, is not only, you know, because at first when Disney Plus started, it was family friendly. There was nothing that was, uh, you know, PG. You had a couple of things, but nothing so more than that. Robot wouldn't have flown. Robot chicken, totally. <laughs> but now they've added... A lot of the more adult things. Right. Along so, with the parental control. Right. So now you have the parental control. So if you put that on, they have everything tagged. So if your kid is logging on, as long as they don't know your passcode, they can't get to it. So you could totally bring this yeah. stuff if there was anything that was questionable that and you don't he's, want He's kids. such a huge Star Wars fan. Oh, too. my God. It's, it's almost a shame. Mm -hmm. It's certainly a shame to the fans to not. Mm -hmm. get his creative mind into the franchise. Right, right. But I feel probably worse for him for, for not getting that opportunity to actually mm -hmm. be involved in that and be a part of that. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, you know, the one concert that we went to and, and you know, when he goes into the, the Star Wars segment, mm -hmm. you know, he's got his full costume on. His, yep. You know, who's his, his, his uh, musical director? I forget his name. Who plays the piano for him? Uh, I can't think of his name. But he's got his Sith Lord. Right, right. Uh, yeah, everybody played, gets. Know? It's great that, yeah. that the show, the stage show that he does is is great. Right. Um, but he did a fantastic job with what he has done. It would mm -hmm. be nice to see him become officially part of the Star Wars Right, lore. right. And he's such a part of Disney already right. you know he has he's voiced a bunch of different disney characters um you know for different uh animated things so it, you know he's already part of that so you need to just kind of let him cross over you know a That's, little bit and, so. and given all the stuff that disney's been reviving from the lucas era mm -hmm. and trying to put their own spin on some of it kind of works some of it's eh, right you know questionable if this is a money maker for them, like it was for Paramount, yeah, I could totally see them, you know, bringing it out. Mm -hmm. And they're done, right? You know? Exactly. I mean, they brought back Clone Wars. They they did a whole other season of Clone Wars right. to finish the story off, right? So you're sitting on a potential gold mine here with like zero investment mm -hmm. to put it out there. So right. there's no reason not to do it, right? And I think the fans are going to kick out of it. When we saw that sizzle reel there, it was, it was very much. It was a toned down version of the Robot Chicken Star Wars. It wasn't quite as adult humorous, mm -hmm. so I think it would it would pass muster, you know. But the article that I I had read cited that Disney didn't want people's first experience to be satirical. Why not? Right. You want it your their first experience to be that that mess of a trilogy you put out? Really? I was gonna say <laughs> if you haven't seen Star Wars already, it's been exactly. forty something years. Right. Granted, if you're a little kid, you have to but start them off the with. Thing, though, this, you know, this series because it had Lucas's involvement. This series was a toned down version of Robot Chicken, so the kids could enjoy it. Right. There were characters in here. It made it more kid friendly. Right. I mean, you took some pretty dark characters and you put them in an animated form that the kids could enjoy. Right. So, I don't know. I think you may see it coming to, to Disney+. Plus. I hope so. If nothing else, this this might serve to get a petition going. To have there him, you go. Have them bring it up for sure. us. Sure. That was all we had for Star Wars news. We'll be right back with the big story of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com.
So the Oscars, right? <laughs> <laughs> so to say that it was a night full of emotion would be an understatement. Putting aside the obvious big emotional outburst of the night, there was more to the 94th Academy Awards than just the slap her ground the world. Troy Coaster's Best Supporting Actor win for his role in CODA tugged at the heartstrings for so many people in the audience who signaled their approval with waving hands, the ASL signal uh, sign for applause. The trend of inclusivity continued with the Best Supporting Actress Award going to Ari- uh, Ariana DeBose for her role as Anita in West Side Story. She scored the win 60 years after Rita Moreno's claimed the award for the same role in the original 1962 film version of the Broadway musical. DeBose was also the first Afro-Latino and openly LGBTQ actor to win in the category. In her heartwarming speech, she touched on what it was like to have her dreams come true and spoke to anyone who had ever questioned their identity, assuring them that there was a place for all. Thankfully, politics took the night off, mostly. After the past few years of showcasing a politically charged stage for activism, the politics were pretty low-key at this year's awards. There were a few references to the Don't Say Gay Bill. Among them were co-host Wanda Sykes, who herself is openly gay. She says, and for you people in Florida, we're going to have a gay night. That was just a mild jab at the controversial legislation. Later that night, Best Actress winner Jessica Chast- Chastain? Chastain. Chastain fired a more obvious shot across the bow of Florida's Republican legislators and governors saying, quote, We're faced with discriminatory and bigoted legislation that is sweeping our country with the only goal of further dividing us. So the big winners of the night, Dune took home six Oscars for Best Cinematography, Best Original Score, Best Film Editing, Best Production Design, Best Visual Effect, and Best Sound. Coda scored three Oscars for Best Picture, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Adapted Screenplay. And The Eyes of Tammy Faye earned two Oscars for Best Actress and Best Makeup and Hairstyling. So, who won? So, Best Picture went to Coda, Best Cinematography went to Dune, Best Director went to Jane Champion for Power of the Dog, Uh, Best Actress, as previously mentioned, went to Jessica Chastain for her role in The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Best Actor went to Will Smith in King Richard, and more on him in a bit. Uh, Best Supporting Actress, of course, went to uh, Ariana DeBose in West Side Story. Best Supporting Actor, we already had mentioned, went to Troy uh, Coaster in CODA. Best Animated Feature Film went to Encanto. Best Documentary Feature, Summer of Soul. Best Original Song uh, was No Time to Die by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. And that rounds up the top categories. So you can check out links in our show notes for a complete list of all of the winners. So what happened with the slap? Uh, I I really, I didn't want to put this in the show because so much pressure had been about it, but it was... And sadly, it overshadowed the entire show, so mm-hmm. we can't help but talk about it. So Chris Rock best summed it up with his quick and concise assessment that, quote, Will Smith just slapped the shit out of me. And that's exactly what happened, for sure. And it happened in front of the entire audience on stage with the sound quickly cut out, for the American audience at least. Thanks to uh, an Australian broadcaster, we were able to get the entire thing. Mm-hmm. What led up to this was what can be best described as a tasteless and insensitive joke directed at Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Chris Rock, on stage to present the Best Documentary Award to Quest Love, had made a joke comparing Smith's wife to Demi Moore's character in G.I. Jane, a reference to her shaved head. Jada Pinkett Smith is very open about her suffering from the autoimmune disease alopecia, which results in hair loss. This resulted in Will Smith climbing up on stage, walking up to Chris Rock, 
and laying one of the most epic slaps to the face on him in the history of face slaps. Rock, to his credit, took it in stride, trying to play off the assault jokingly, only to have Smith, who by now have returned to his seat, berate him in a vulgar tirade about keeping his wife's name out of his mouth. So Entertainment Weekly has since reported that an unnamed source affiliated with the show confirmed that the joke that set off the moment was not in the script. The New Yorker seemed to further confirm this by a source identified only as a man who worked a tech job at the ceremony, who was overheard by attendees saying, Everything I know from backstage was that that was totally real. He further clarified, it was certainly not in our script. Will Smith, who would go on to win the Best Actor Award later in the evening, apologized to the Academy and other winners during his acceptance speech. Smith has since issued a public apology on Instagram for his actions, saying, Violence in all of its forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are part of the job, but jokes about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear, and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line, and I was wrong. I am embarrassed, and my actions were not indicative of the man I want to be. There is no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences did issue a statement condemning Will Smith's actions and announcing they were beginning a formal review and will be exploring further action and consequences in accordance with their bylaws and standards and conduct and California law. On Wednesday, they issued an update on their formal review, saying they had already begun the disciplinary proceedings against Smith. They cited, quote, inappropriate physical contact, abusive and threatening behavior, and compromising the Academy as violations by Smith. According to the bylaws, Smith will receive 15 days' notice of the Academy's vote and have an opportunity to be heard via written response. Smith could face suspension, expulsion, or other sanctions. CNN also reported uh, that the statement acknowledged that Smith was requested to leave the ceremony after the altercation and refused to do so. To this, the the Academy also recognizes, quote, "We We could have handled the situation differently. Chris Rock was back on his Ego Death Tour on Wednesday. After receiving back-to-back standing ovations at his show in Boston, Rock made his first public comments on the incident since Sunday. I'm still kind of processing what happened, so at some point, I'll talk about it. It'll be serious and it'll be funny, but right now, I'm going to tell some jokes. Rock also put to bed that he had been in contact with Smith, saying, I haven't talked to anyone despite what you've heard. In the latest development in this ongoing saga, Will Smith has now officially resigned from the Academy. Variety reports that Academy President David Rubin issued a statement saying, We have received and accepted Will, Mr. Will Smith's immediate resignation from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. We will continue to move forward with our disciplinary proceedings after Mr. Smith against Mr. Smith for violations of the Academy's standards of conduct in advance of our next scheduled board meeting on April 18th. So I'm not sure what powers they have now short of stripping his Oscar from him. Uh, Clearly they can't suspend him or expel him. Right, because he already said, all right, that's fine, I'm out. Right. Nor do I know, they don't really have any enforcement rights on his working in the industry Mm -hmm. because that's going to be a union-based thing. Right. So what's going to come out of this? You might see him get stripped from his uh, Oscar there, and then I'm not sure how they handle that moving forward. Right, because I I don't, you know, if you strip somebody, because I don't. I, I don't know if they've ever done that in yeah, I, in the I past. So I is there any research on it? Right. So is it something where like the runner up, whoever was the next to get votes, 
gets it, or do you just have a little a blank, asterisk, yes. you know, next to no award this year, you know, formally given to whatever, you know, former Academy Award winner? I don't know. It's yeah. it's such a weird thing yeah. you know that happened because it's never as if the world wasn't screwed up enough already right and like you've had some wacky people you know win the award or uh you know marlon brando famously sent up a you know sent up yeah. a, a replacement and they were just kind of like yeah whatever you know and you even had uh sean penn but they didn't strip either of them of right the award. right and you had sean penn who was basically saying well i'm gonna melt it down if you don't you know, bring attention to the war that's going on, you know, in the, you know, so there, there's all this, again, wackiness that, that comes from the people that end up winning. But in so many cases, you have people that have won and then just kind of drifted off and, right. you know, you never hear from them yeah, so again. It's not, it's not unheard of that people use the award as a platform for an agenda that they have. Right. But they're never punished for it. Right. And I, I mean, not publicly or according to the bylaws. I mean, right, right. Marlon Brando was largely blacklisted for a while after he did his. But right. Of course, no one's ever got up on stage and slapped somebody at the awards either. So right. I'm, <laughs> it's all kind and of fresh territory. And that's the thing is, like, why did they keep it going? Like, why didn't they just go to a commercial so that there wasn't... Well, and it's funny because they discussed this uh, this week on The View. Okay. And someone had kind of made the same point on the show and Whoopi Goldberg, who's an officer, I think she... I don't know what, what role she plays, but she's on the board of the Academy. Okay. And she made the point of, well, it's a live show. So the last thing you want to do is have an army of security guards come out and forcibly remove somebody on live TV. And to that, my point is cut to commercial. Right. I mean, you have stuff like this happen on live TV all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's really a poor excuse. And she was really defensive about the fact that the co-host on the show at the time was labeling, um, Hollywood elite as, as one big group. And, and she, made the statement of, well, that's like saying black people like chicken. And it's like, well, no, it's it's not. I mean, it's it's a it's a generalization. But the man got up on stage and slapped another person right. at an award show. And nobody said anything. Right. Everyone stayed in their seats and they then applauded him. They gave him a standing ovation when he got up on stage he, for his award. Right. How is that acceptable? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he should have immediately been removed. Mm -hmm. They should have had someone there to accept the reward, award for him and mm -hmm. then been done with That would have been the right thing to do. Right, right. And that's the thing is because you know they have the dump button. Now, right. granted, they haven't really had to use it in many years. Not so much for the Academy Awards. More so when you have, like, the Grammys or something um, you know, something else where, you know, you know they have that delay button that they can, well, you know, they hit. Well, they cut the sound out in the United States. Right. But that's what I'm saying is if you can do that, then just go to commercial. When, that's the as thing. Soon as, you as see soon him, as he gets up there and hits him, you should cut the commercial. Right. You should have been like, oh, cut. That's, that's the producer's fault there mm -hmm. for keeping that up yeah. there. So that's the whole thing is if you would have done that then you wouldn't have had all these clips and, you know, videos floating around. Right. I'm sure somebody would have had something. So, but then... A couple other things to throw out there that I didn't include in, in our script, but were in articles. Um, the joke that Chris Rock made mm -hmm. was confirmed to have not been in the script. Right. So that was, you know, him trying to... Just as, off the cuff. And Howard Stern was quoted as saying, he was basically trying to make a joke to make a terrible show funnier and more enjoyable. You know, and uh, like he's a comedian. That's what he does. So I, right. can, I can understand that to a certain extent. And then he also, Chris Rock also came out and claimed he knew nothing about Jada Pinkett Smith's medical condition. And he wound up apologizing for making the, the joke after mm -hmm. finding out about it. How truthful that is, I don't know. I didn't see what the sources were for it. I don't know. Because he's, you know, the two of them are associated with each other he's he he was on you know smith's show ages ago and they've had 
friendships in the past. And... Right, but they've also been kind of at each other, too. They kind of yeah. have a, a back and forth thing that's also been going on. Which is you know. why I, I question his sincerity of whether he knew about well, and that's the other not. thing, too, is and, and here's where, you know, I kind of, you know, whatever. So, yes, the the Academy Awards, the Golden Globes, all of these things, you know, depending on who the host is, somebody's going to get roasted right. that and, and where, you know, Will Smith even said, I know jokes are coming at me. And that's the thing is he was the one that was nominated so you make the joke at him yeah, exactly yeah. nobody else you know basically anybody else that's there should be left alone you know and why do we need to make fun of people anyway there you know if you have that type of humor where you have to make fun of other people then you're not funny in my right. opinion now granted there are people that think chris rock is hysterical and honestly i i am not a i'm not a fan of 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 and Chris Rock. I. I've never been and, a fan of Chris Rock. You know, I have friends, women of of color, who were like, he was totally out of line. And you know what? There's stuff that he said in the past that's even worse than this. Yeah. Like this was tame in comparison, and that he really needs to be done with. Like you know, yes, he shouldn't have gotten slapped. That shouldn't have happened. But why do you keep bringing somebody who's been so offensive to so many people? back and back and, and back too. There there's no point for that. So, you know, again, a lot of back and forth with was it right? Was it, you know, and the other thing too is he wasn't there to host. He didn't need to sit up there and do a spiel. He didn't right. need to he do was there a to set. Read a script, he was there. The award here's the award. Da 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 gone. And granted, yes, they always have, you know, little skits and and things banter, back banter, and banter 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 <laughs> um you know back and forth but there was no need for him so if he had just gone up there yep. stayed to his script we wouldn't be talking about it we'd be able to say hey look at all yeah, these I mean, there's... great things that happened at the academy awards and, and... that's the worst part of this whole thing right is that this entire thing is overshadowing the accomplishments of the other people who mm -hmm. won awards here. Right. And even the nominees. Right. Now, no one's going to talk about anything else other than the slap. Right. Which is which is really the tragic thing, which is, you know, when in, in Will Smith, and I didn't include his, his resignation speech here, but mm -hmm. in his resignation speech, he yeah. mentions, you know, he apologizes for, mm -hmm. for overshadowing right. everything else. I mean, there's plenty of blame to go around. Oh, absolutely. Chris Rock was not innocent in this entire thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, he didn't deserve what he got. Right. But, you know, the joke that he made was highly inappropriate and should not have been made, mm -hmm. period. So if anything, he should have – that should have been done backstage. There should have been a discussion. There should have been an apology that was issued mm -hmm. afterwards. And that's how it should have been handled, not yeah. by getting up on stage and slapping him. That's yeah. never the way to do it. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully – this drama is over, and we can put it behind us now and move on. We shall on. see. Um, I will officially stop caring about this after this podcast is done recording. I'm so glad to hear that. That's just my position. I wanted to put it out there. Okay. So that was all we had. Believe it or not, that was all we had for entertainment news Really? Today. That was it? <laughs> we didn't have anything else? Uh, we'll be right back with... Me trying to find my mouse cursor somewhere. There it is. We'll be right back with <laughs> uh, some upcoming convention news. And we'll, we, I don't have it queued up, but we'll talk about what we're doing tomorrow, too. Just sure. for last minute stuff. Sure. So what's our convention news? So the big one is obviously next weekend, and it is uh, fr Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it is Fan Expo, formerly Wizard World. Uh, it's going to be at the Philadelphia Convention Center. It is the 8th, 9th, and 10th. So join tens of thousands of fans who are just like you and experience the ultimate playground for comics, sci-fi, horror, anime, and gaming. Three days of citywide events, family-friendly attractions, and world-renowned celebrities await. The showtimes are Friday, 4 from 9... Uh, 4 to 9, Saturday 10 to 7, and Sunday 10 to 5. Uh, Pre-sale tickets, I 
uh, or at least the reduced rate of pre-sale tickets uh, has already ended. So you can probably still buy tickets online, and I'm sure they are going to be uh, doing tickets uh, at the door uh, as well. Okay. And what are we doing tomorrow? So tomorrow we have the uh, April Fool's Toy Show, and that is... Uh, the Fool. <laughs> right. And that's one of our uh, smaller little toy shows, kind of, well, not really local because it's in Delaware. Welcoming tens of fans. <laughs> tens of fans. <laughs> couple hundred fans uh yeah it's it's a nice little uh local area it's about a half hour for us in in delaware right over the bridge uh it's at the nur shrine center um they do saturday today is actually the train show um that i think goes until like four or five uh in the afternoon and then tomorrow is the toy show uh, part of it. Uh, they have a couple of different rooms, usually some classic toys. Some vendors even have new stuff. Uh, it's definitely a place to find the unique, uh, one of a kind type things, uh, too, uh, as well. So, yeah, the one thing that I like about this is it's, uh, a lot of older toys. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things that I look for when I go shopping at these, you know, they're not conventions they're to yeah it's shows. just a toy show um i look for vintage star wars toys mm -hmm. and this is a great place to find this i found my carded vader here yep i wound up pulling a uh, land speeder that was in really good shape my millennium falcon i pulled from here so this is a great place to pull stuff from mm -hmm. yeah and and it's kind of set up you know it's all inside but it's kind of set up like a flea market i guess um, you know, with lots of different rows of tables and, you know, it's funny because there's always the, the guys that are selling like really old stuff and it's like nobody ever buys anything. Like you never see anybody buying it. So it's almost like here's an opportunity to just to, yeah. to display where other people, um, you know, uh, are there obviously looking to, to make money. They usually have a guy selling video games. There's usually somebody selling, you know, like one or two video game people, one or two um, DVD the movie people. The there. movie guy yeah. is usually there. Um, the you 3D know. printed guy usually isn't there, though. No, he's not at this one. He's usually at the, the bigger one. Yeah. So. yeah. So anyway, we'll be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, well, we'll let you know how we make out. Yeah. We might have a few few finds that we, we right. come back with. Absolutely. So that was all we had today. But I, before we go, I do want to once again employ, uh, implore you, not employ you because I'm not paying anyone <laughs> to come to our, our site. Um, I would implore you or at least invite you to visit and subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment Audio and video versions of all of our podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. Anywhere you can get a podcast these days. Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, Buzzsprout, etc., etc. We also invite you to contact us and give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com. Uh, slash insights underscore things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook under insights into things podcast. We're also on YouTube with high res videos all at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can find us on Instagram under insights into things. Or you can get links to all that and much more on our official website at insights into things.com. That's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.